Hello. So we left off with Annie petting the putara dog and being like, wow, it's so soft. It feels like petting Henry, which is the dog that lives next door to her. So here we mm. have a new kanji. Do you know what this kanji is? It looks like he, but it's not he. It does As look a little bit like fire. Yeah, fire looks... Um, what is it? Like, what is it? That's fire, right? <laughs> it also look, should look mm -hmm. like Oki that we saw earlier. Oki, right? Ah, uh, hey, Oki. Right there, there's T and Oki. So they do look similar. This has no relation with that. This word right here, which is big with a little line on the top, means dog. Oh, wow, Inu. <laughs> Inu. Yep, so Inu is big with a little line on the top, which is very mm. random. Okay, so something you've probably seen a lot would be like kata. And you know, well, sometimes kata is used to mean from, and other times kata can be used to mean because. And it's pretty obvious to spot when it means which, um, but you'd have to um, be told, basically, which I don't think it's normally that much mentioned. Um, so kata, which means from, goes after nouns. So for example, if I said, Aikawa-san kara kita. That means I heard from Aikawa-san. However, when this is marking um uh, to mean because, it goes after sentences or clauses. Which is the big mm. fancy word for baby sentences. So, for example, joshi is a noun. So you can't just say joshi kara. You have to say josh, joshi da kara. You have to add the da so that this is a sentence. Um, for example, ignoring this half, can you read this for me? Ani wa joshi da. Yeah, what does that mean? Ani is a girl or yep. female. I don't yep. know what the exact Ani is was. a girl. A uh, girl is a good way of putting it. Joshi is a little bit um, like saying lady. Like not, it's like in between mm. lady and girl, but we don't really have a word for that in English. But it, it's more like saying lady than saying girl, you know. <laughs> so as you mm -hmm. see, that in itself is basically a sentence. Annie is a girl. And you can use kara to make longer sentences like this. Can you read this for me? Annie wa joshi da kara danshi janai. Yep. What do you think this means? Oh, danshi. Yep, danshi is like boy, and joshi is girl. So what do you think this sentence so, is saying? Annie is a girl because she's not a boy. Yep, because Annie is a girl, <laughs> she's not a boy. So the the, the because part uh, is being attached to uh, the whatever the because verb is attached to. So because Annie is a girl, she's not a boy. So it tends to be the opposite than how we uh, put it in English. But yeah, sometimes you just will see dakara on its own as well. Dakara is like a way to start with a word because. Um, but yeah, so yeah. So when you see kara and it's at the end of like a verb or da or something like that, then it's meaning because and it doesn't mean from. So from is only after nouns. And it's not after a noun here, it's after a sentence. So how do you hmm. think you would say because it's not a dog? How do you think you because would Because it's not a dog. So we start with takara. Or I guess I wouldn't. I would be like, um, inu janai takara. No, yep. takara inu janai. That. Um, you can say both. Inu janai kara. Inu janai kara. Takara. And you can also say takara um, inu janai. Um, the second one hmm. feels more like you're um mad at someone being almost like I said it earlier. It's not a dog. Da ka da mm -hmm. inu janai. It, it feels kind of aggressive here, versus mm -hmm. inu janai kara, which is like basically saying because it's not a dog. This feels more uh unemotional versus da ka da. Feels like you're kind of angry. Like I've said this angry. over and over again. It's because it's not a dog. Okay. So now here's Jack talking. What does he say? Ani, so it's a inu janai 
じゃないんだからな。Perfect. So this ん and this な are basically flavor text. ん is showing up because this is an explanation. It's not just because, but it's also because with an explanation. So this could be like the no. No becomes ん、だから。So, um, and な is like a vocal sigh. So it's like, like na. <laughs> But yeah, so what, what did Jack say? Ani, uh, so it's what, so that basically, inu janain dakara. So that's not a, because that's not a dog, or yep, that's not a dog, Ani. Yep, because that's not a dog, Ani. Um, So the because is here because the in context he basically dropped off something which is basically stop touching that put that it on, or、oh, okay. <laughs> that's basically like the context. So stop touching that touching that put that it on because that's not a dog, Annie. That's why we have the、mm, the explanation. It's the explanation for why he should stop touching the dog. I mean the put that it on, but that as I said is、mm. dropped. It's it's full context based. Um, so you've done this one on the bottom before. Do you know how this is read? Uh, did it nice? This guy's read differently. Do you know how it's read? Does it? Yep, did you and does it? So if you see this, how do you think this is read? Um, wow, it's mixed. Uh, <laughs> how would that be? Does、so, it? Yep, it's does it. Perfect. Okay, so we've seen tara. We saw it just earlier today with bare tara, which is if、mm. um, I get caught. So tara is used when we're talking about a very specific occasion. So basically, the next time this occurs, then this will happen. Tends to be what it means. For example, can you read the sentence、mm. for me? Ah,、uh, natsu ga kitara nihon ni iku. So, this means when summer comes, I'm going to go to Japan. So, this insinuates、mm. it's this summer, not every summer comes, I go to Japan. It, it's just saying,、mm. next time summer comes, I'm going to go to Japan. Same with like before, just saying, if we get caught right now, something bad's going to happen.、Um, so, it helps the work for a very specific occasion. This can also be used as a why don't you kind of meaning. Why don't cha? Why don't cha? If I said, Nihon ni itte mitara. So by adding te miru, which means to try. So if you try to go to Japan would be a direct translation, but it means contextually, why don't you try going to Japan? Nihon ni itte mitara? So. Yeah. Hmm. It's a way to invite someone or to give them like adv- advice almost in a very like, well, w- if you go to Japan, then maybe it would be fun or something good will happen or something like that. Or maybe you'll come to understand Japanese better. Like it kind of has that kind of connotation. So why don't you try it? Why don't you try going to Japan? So that's just tara with temite, which is what we're going to see in. This page. So we're going to start with just what Annie says out loud. What did she say? Oni chan, s a w a t e mitara. Do you know what sawaru means? To squat. That's a good guess because, um, what is that? Su, su waru is the set. I'm not sure what squat in particular would be doing, but but I could see it being similar to that, especially as sumo is like a. <laughs> has like a squatting like position you're supposed to be in when you push people.、Um, but sawadu means to touch.、Oh. So, what is she telling her big brother to do? Oni chan, swatte mitara? Big brother, touch mitara.、Um, are you going to touch it? Yeah.、Uh. So, or why don't you touch it, big brother? So, the insinuation she's asking it with mitara because she's saying maybe you'll see it is like a dog, you know? Maybe you'll see it's not that bad. I mean, if you touch it, it's kind of like the reason why mitara is there rather than 
mimashol or something like that. Some other invitation word. Like There's lots of different touch. ways. Mm. Yeah. So right here, she's just saying, brother, why don't you try it? You might have a new world you'll be opened up to, basically. And then what happens next? So you wanted them all. Jack what? Chiga? Chiga desu. This means hand. You know what hand is in Japanese? Uh, ude? Ude is arm. Um, ude hand is. Arm. is... Hmm. So hand is, is te. Yubi is finger. Oh, te. Okay. Te, hai. Te ga dasenai. Dasenai. So, so iwarete. You know why it's iwarete right here? So iwarete. What does that mean? So Jack iwarete. Wa? So iwarete. Um, it's iwarete so... because it's jakuwa. So, Is it just it can't... masculine? It's not masculine. This has to do with who's doing the verb. So, if it said, um, so you jaku, that'd be incorrect in this specific context. Because why would Jack say, Onichan mo sawatte mitara? That would be weird, right? For Jack to say that. Mm. So because of that, you has been conjugated into, I believe, passive form is what it's called. And that means the person doing the verb is not Jack. Um, so this right here means that this is being done to Jack. So Jack is being told soul. What's the so tell us? Do you remember? So means right or correct. Specifically, so actually means that, and it means right and correct in certain contexts. Like so this ne, so this ne. The this is that is right, right? Because ne is right, <laughs> and so is mm -hmm. that, and so this is is. So sometimes you also will hear it just say, so this, so this. That just means that is. That, that is. Oh, okay. is literally what they're yeah. saying. But in contextually, that sounds a little off in English. So they just translate. Uh-huh. Yeah, right, right. They, that, that's how they just translate it. But it just means that is. So so is that. So so iwarita is being told that. Jack. Well, do you know why we have temo in here first? It's mo plus temo. ke form been a little bit i think since we saw this mm, um it does refer to something uh mm, a little is bit. it the event one uh yeah that might be right um more like temo means even if um even if and it's contextual whether or not the verb before it occurred it could occur or it could not have occurred in this context it did occur but it, that's not like a grammar thing I mean, so even if Jack was told that would be a way you could translate it. But over here it says even after Jack was told that would be how we translate it in English. But in Japanese, they don't specify whether or not this verb occurred for this grammar point. Mm. But yeah, so Jack was told this. But even though he was told this, Jack wa te ga dasenai. What do you think that means? Te ga dasenai. Hai. Um, te ga dasenai. Dasegai, no, dasenai. Does that mean touch mm. or not touch? Do you know what um dasu or deru normally means? It means to disappear or I guess to appear mm -hmm. in some yes. contexts. Um, it basically always means to appear and it's context based whether or not they're appearing in a different location than where you are. So. We say exit from a building, for example, they're appearing outside. <laughs> it's, it's a, mm -hmm. So they're going into a bigger location. Or you take out your pens from your backpack. You can say they were they left the backpack, or you can say they appeared into the real world from the backpack. Mm -hmm. But it's better to think about it as appear than to disappear, because it's almost always meaning appear. It's just it's a way to like Think about it in the context to mean that meaning, even though in a lot of times in way. English yeah. we like to say uh, disappear. So if you enter a stage, for example, that's that's it. But it's like you're appearing. Um, but yeah, um, it does. It means to appear. So if you're saying my hand nigh, what's nigh telling us? My hand does nigh. So 
it doesn't appear. Yeah, my hand won't appear. So in this um context, um daseru basically means to be able to. Um to be able to appear. So he's saying his hand is unable to appear, which is meaning that he won't touch the uh putradon. He's basically he's holding his hand close to himself. So it means he's not sticking his hand out. So Tega dateru means he has the ability to stick out his hand. But he this right here say is basically saying mm. won't. So Jack won't stick out his hand. That's a night. Yeah. So Jack won't stick out his hand. Um versus he didn't stick out his hand or didn't want to. It just says he won't. So Jack won't stick out his hand, even though he was told that. Which was, Big Brother, why don't you touch it? Mm. Hi. Okay. So this right here means close. Do you have any idea how this might be read? Sometimes you uh, might just see a... it as an adjective. Hmm. Chikai or Shizuka. Yep. No, Shizuka means quiet, doesn't no, it? No, you're right with Chikai. The Chikazuku. Ah, so chikazuku chikai. means to get close. So chikai, you're correct, is this has the exact same kanji, and that just means close. So it's just the adjective close. So chikazuku adds juku, which means um to get close, and chika is also close. So oh. uh, attaching closeness, I guess. So you use this when you're approaching something. Chikazuku. And you see it's right here. This is a verb. See, chikazuita. So, chikazu, so chikai is an adjective and chikazuku, to get close, is the verb. Um, okay, so let's start with this. That's what um, Annie says. What did she say? Uh, you know what mayo means? Hmm. Like Mayoni? Maybe. Um, I always remember it as Michael, which means lost child. Michael. Uh I don't know. Like Michael just was like the one word that like stuck with me. Michael ni Uh because it's just a funny thing because we don't say that in English. But Mayo means to mm. get lost. And it also means to hesitate. Um, so in this context, it's hesitating naide. What do you think that means? Hesitating naide. So not hesitating. Yep. Don't hesitate. Right. Yep. Don't mm. hesitate. And yatte mi yo. Let's try it or you should try it. Yep. You should try it. Don't hesitate and just do it. Is what she's saying. So as you see right here, she just say she has it in te form because te on its own is an order, and she's using mite to mean try. So let's try it, or you should try it. Um, it's not really let's because um that'd be slightly different. So it's like you should try it. Is basically what she's saying. Mm. She makes it into an order. Yatemi yo yo, which is you should. The yo is like the should part in this context because you use that when you're making a statement. That someone else kind of should agree with. So that's what I'm translating as should in this context. Yeah. Just, mm. You should do it, but it doesn't like mean should, but that just works better in that translation, I think. Just try it. So do it. And what happens next? Jack wa osoru osoru uteredon ni chikazuita. So osoru osoru basically means hesitantly, like very cautiously. Soru, soru. Soru, soru. It kind of has like a toddling idea. So when you're a baby and you're toddling over to your mommy when you just learn how to walk, that's kind of osoru osoru, like walking. <laughs> that's kind of where it comes mm. from. Uh, but over so he's basically kind of cautiously, slowly um chikazukuing toward what the puterodon yes so what does chikazuku mean 
It means to approach. Yes. So altogether, what did Jack do? Mm. So Jack... So Jack Chikazuku's the Pitradon in an osoro osoro kind of way. Sorry, I gotta do something real quick. All good? Kikoiru? Kikoimasu ka? Oh! Syntax toki chatta. Okay. So, all together, what does it say again? Jack wa chikazuita kutsuru ni So, Jack carefully approached the buttero. Baby steps. Yep, baby steps. <laughs> Hi. Oh, so this, we saw this earlier, and I had you do it without mm. this. Do you remember what this is? What could this be? Um, this is that train thing. Mm. Um, probably not. If you turn uh, this upside down, I feel like it makes more more sense. Oh, neck. Yep, Kubi. it is neck. Yep, mm. it's our neck because this is our head. Here's our kubi and our shoulder and our teeny little arms. Kubi. So. So so. Okay, so what does it say? Hmm. Ah, te o noboshi. Um, kubi ni furete miru. Nice. Can you read this verb again? Ah, noboshi. Is this bow right noboshi. here? Noboshi. That is ba. You're right. Nobashi. Nobashi. Do you know what te o nobasu means? Nobashi. Te o nobasu. Te o nobasu. Um, te o nobasu. Nobasu. Like noboru? Mm, they're actually oh. not related, but they do sound very similar. Nobasu means mm. to stretch. Ow. Ooh. In this context. So he stretches what? What does he stretch out? His hands. Yep. And what does he try to do? Kubi o furete. Kubi o furete. So he tries to lower his neck. Good guess. Good guess. So this right here is complicated as it could mean that. It could mean that. But contextually, mm -hmm. you would really stretch out your hand to touch your own neck. As normally mm -hmm. your neck's pretty close to you. So contextually, we know he's stretching out to something. So unless he was like that specific kind of bakemono that has that really long neck that, that's like the creepy smiling guy and he needs to stretch out his hand to touch his neck uh or if he's like a t-rex and it's like a teeny little arms in this context he's probably touching the necks of the putteradon but grammarly yes mm. he could be saying he tries to touch his own neck but that would be a little bit like odd like why would you she, try to I... touch your neck unless something weird happened but here it's he tries to touch the putteradon's neck but 100 that is context based so nothing wrong with uh, mm. without the context Okay, so this right here is kan. Do you know what this is then? How to read this? What does it say? Um, kan shoku. So kan shoku basically means sensation. It's basically it's what what the feeling when you touch something. So a physical feeling. Mm. Kan shoku. Hi. So kan is very, very common, which is why I'm having to learn it. In terms of the things like kanjo, which means emotions and a lot of things of that are kanji, which not kanji like, the, but like the feeling of something, not kanji mm. like kanji, kanji. Hi. <laughs> different kinds of kanji. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this is just kan, so pretty hi. long kanji has a kokoro in it. Okay, so um, let's read this whole thing, even though it's two sentences. Hi. Yeah, let me just quickly clean my glasses. Alright, um, 
不思議な、uh, that kanji. Hmm, we just was... saw this. Has some kind of touch meaning. Hi, ah, kakashi, kakashoku. It's kan. Kakashoku. Kan shoku. Kan shoku da. Ah, kan shoku da. Miji ka. Te ga. Close. This is actually ke. Oh, it's ke. So ke means um fur. So ke is fur、mm. and te is hand, which do look very. Similar if I put te right over here, <laughs> right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah,、Hi. they're 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 false friends. Ah, beshi beshiri hoi te te hoi te te um, um, katakana ah.、Uh, That is like he, I think. It's、so、actually it, B. B. Hmm. Biroad. Biroad no yo datta. Nice. So, first off, what's this verb right here? Can you read it for me? Haite ite. Yep, haite ite. So, biroad means velvet. And bishiri. Means close together. Do you know what haeru means? I mean, not ha- hae, haeru. Not haeru. 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 So, you can use, so this is commonly used with hair. So, you'll see someone's like in a, in a book, for example, you'll say, oh, they have a beard that's growing or a mustache that's growing. Haeru right here will show up for that. So, right here, it's being showed up for the putra don's ke. What's ke? Do you remember? Fur. Yes. So, the fur is growing in a bishiri like way. What does bishiri mean? Do you remember? Bishiri. Bishiri. Kashi.、Um, And that means like close to each other or like very, very、um, jam packed. So it's just saying、mm. he's not bald, right?、Mm. <laughs> And then we describe the texture as birodo no yo. What does that mean? Birodo no yo.、Um, does that mean?、Hmm. Birodo. So, do you know what yo tends to mean? Yo is like emphasis or exclamation mark yo. It can mean that.、Oh. That's normally a yo by itself. And that normally goes at the very end of the sentence. So, birodo no yo da da yo would be that kind of yo. So, it's right at the end and it's normally、mm. short. If it's long, it's normally going to be marked with a line like this rather than having a hiragana character. Um, this right here is a yo we saw earlier, except for it was yo ni. Yo ni. So. These for similes to mean like. So the fur、mm. of the putra dong is growing, grown all tightly jammed back together and was like velvet. Um, like velvet. What kind of hair did it have other than the fact that it was like velvet and tightly grown together?、It、was mijikai. Mijika. Yep. So short. Yep, it was short. And how did he describe the kanshoku? Ah,、uh, fushigi na. So、yep. mysterious. Yep. Na. Um, kanshoku da. So mysterious feeling. Yep. It was a mysterious feeling. It was short hair, very、um, pishiri, and felt like velvet. Okay. So, what's happening next? Ne, yawaraka de shiyo to ani ga itte or itta. Yep. Ne, yawarakai de shiyo. You know what yawarakai means? De shiyo. Yawarakai. Um, 
やわら。やわらかい means soft. Oh, soft. ねえ、やわらかいでしょ Do you know what that means? To all together? ねえ、isn't it soft? Yep, perfect. And then to any ga ita. That part's pretty easy. Mm hmm. And Annie said, or Annie、yep. said that. Yep, Annie said that. To is like the quotation. To. to. Okay.、Um, this right here is toru. You know what toru means? Toru's to pick up. Yep. Specifically, it's more like to take than the pick up. Like, there is probably picking up, is probably going to be involved. But you wouldn't say,、mm. for example, I picked up an apple from the tree. Like, that sounds weird, right? Versus I took an apple、right. from the tree. Perfectly okay. And in certain contexts, it can also mean to take pictures and to take something,、mm, like to feel something. So, learning it as to take is a little bit better than the pick up.、Um, so, what is to take in Japanese? It is toru. Nice. Toru. And I believe this will be our last sentence of the day. Can you read it for me? Hi. Jack wa a ryok, ryok ka, ryok kara a shi to. Or is that no? No to. No to to. En pitsu, en pitsu, en pitsu o. Um, tori dashte.、Yep. And then we have a very interesting looking kanji, which I've seen before.、Mm -hmm. Is it kiku? Close. It's actually ka. kaki. Kaki. Kaki dasu. Kaki, kaki dasu. So, right kaki here,、dashita. we have two dasus right here. This is the normal dasu that looks like this. Dasu with that、mm, kanji.、Okay. So, you see, if we learn it as to exit, suddenly these don't make any sense. Like,、uh, but versus <laughs> two up here, These tend to make a lot more sense with that kind of meaning, especially since the compound version of dasu means basically to start normally. So, kaki dasu、mm. means to begin writing, or tori dasu means to、um, take out or to take something so that it appears.、Um, so, so, what did he take out? So, out works okay in this case, but what did he take so that it appears to us all to see? Let's see. Um, in pizza, no to. So, notebook and pencil. Yep. And where did he take it from? Where was it before? The ryotsuku. So, the rucksack or backpack.、Yep. Yuki. And who took、Yuki. it out? Who took out the pen and the pencil and all that stuff? I mean, the, pe the pencil and the notebook from? Who took it?、Mm -hmm. Jack. Yep. Jack did. And. We have some time, so I'm going to do a little bit more. Do you know what this is? We saw this a little bit earlier. It means fur. That is ke. Yeah. Yep. Okay.、Mm -hmm. So this is what Jack wrote down in his notebook. What did he write? Hi. A mijikai ke ga ke ga wa ite iru. A pa 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 pa. A haite iru. ベルトベルトみたい。はい。So, what did he write down? So, short for カバカイル。So, it grows and then we have velvet みたい。And it feels like velvet. Yep, exactly. So it has it 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 has short hair. So it's it's being it's growing short hair. <laughs>、mm. it、sounds weird in English for some reason. Okashi, okashi, this man has short hair. We we're so weird in English, but we say we has the owning、mm. it. Um, and then <laughs> it's like velvet. So perfect. And that is where we're going to stop for the day. Um, any questions before、yep. we go? No,、nope, that's fine. Awesome. Then I'll be seeing you next week. Then, bye. Yep. Bye.